Hi everybody, I'm Andrew Locke. Welcome to another episode of Gaffer and Gear. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about a job I worked on a couple of months ago for Magic Mike Live, which is a stage dance show, which is about to hit Melbourne soon. There's nothing incredibly amazing about the lighting setup, except the dance floor area had to be side lit because we had a camera crane and a steady cam working constantly. So we had to get an even exposure across the dance floor from just side lighting it. So in this episode, we're gonna cover inverse square law, which is how light dissipates over distance. And we're gonna talk about how to get around it using grids. Okay, so before we have a look at the promo, I've got to give some thanks. So first off, Tim Maloney from Axis Films. Uh, Tim is the company director there, and he was also the director of photography of this job. Paul Goldman, who's the director, and Alison Falk, who was the uh, international choreographer who came in from the States for this. So uh, before we get into having a look at it, I'm just going to explain the brief. The promo consists of uh, dance routines in a studio environment on a dance floor, and the other uh, elements are location shots, basically iconic locations around Melbourne. So the concept is, as this dance group moves from state to state to state, they will reshoot those location elements so that wherever they are, they always have iconic uh, landmarks in the TV commercial. So let's have a look. You can have anything you want. want, want, want. You, you just have to ask. You just have to ask. You just have to ask. Ask anything you want. Yeah, so as you can see there, the dancers were pretty damn skilled. Um, one thing I'd like to point out, the shot where the guy flips and then we go from studio to, um, to location, that's not green screen. That dancer just nailed the move. So that, that says a lot for the skill level of these guys. That's pretty impressive. Okay, so um, first off, no gaffer on the location scenes. And that wasn't due to uh, budget uh, restraints or anything like that. It was to do with getting permits in time. Um, having me there or another gaffer there just created, would create a nightmare permit wise. So uh, basically they just shot at the best time of day that they could um, in terms of lighting. So no gaffer there. So basically all I worked on was the studio elements. Now in terms of the studio lighting elements, I have to give some credit to other people and that is Pro Light and Sound. They're a company with 25 years experience and they were fantastic to work with. So basically they supplied uh, all of the theatrical lights. So they supplied the MML, which is in the back of shot. And that was amazing. That, um, that was uh, fully dimmable, fully color tunable, uh, full RGB. And they could do things like uh, get it to flicker like it was a neon. So um, that was pretty impressive. And they also supplied, I think it was 16 moving heads so we had eight on either side. Uh, the, first, uh, the first four were uh, an amber, the same as the MML, and the second four were a, a blue. Um, so basically those guys uh, supplied all that. So I'm just gonna give a quick shout out to those guys. So that was Stav, Tony, Matt, Torren, and Paul. So um, look, if you need any, uh, any effects lights, any staging lights, I'd swear by them. They were just an absolute pleasure to work with, no egos, and they just nailed the job. Um, they, they were, they were, I can't swear by them enough. So pretty much all I did was light the dancers. That was pretty much my brief. So we'll start off talking about the backlights first. So we wanted a, um, a deep blue backlight. So we went with 1.2K PARs because they're daylight, so they're already blue. And then we put Zenith blue uh, gel on them. Now I'm just gonna explain quickly why I went with 1.2K PARs and not something bigger. Um, my main concern was these are in shot. So they're, they're featuring. And I didn't want to have a light source that in shot would be say, four times bigger than your dancer's head. That you wanted them to be in the background and not really heroing. So we didn't want a, a massive fixture. We wanted something small that looks like it actually belongs there. So that's you know, 1.2K par or an M18, for example. But I elected to go with 1.2K pars um, with medium spot lenses in them. So um, the advantage you have over say a medium spot lens and a 1.2K par versus an M18 is an M18 when you flood spot it, it stays as a circular beam. So the width is the same as the height. 
Now, in this circumstance here, we don't, uh, we don't need height. You know, the dancers, they do jump, but they don't go a long way up. So we basically wanted the light concentrated in a rectangle. So the medium spot lens has a rectangular beam. So we can spot it up, get the width, but we're not wasting light above and underneath. All that light's concentrated with the lens. So that helps us out a lot because we didn't want any spill light from my lights hitting the ground. So in that circumstance, a 1.2K par, an old school 1.2K par with lenses has benefits over an M18. Okay, so next let's talk about our key lights. All right, so uh, we were side lit. Basically our key lights were two 12 by 12 frames with a half grid cloth and we had M40 HMIs going through those on either side. So the re reason we were side lighting it is uh, basically we had to get wide shots from the front, so we didn't want any lighting fixtures in the way of that. And we also had a steady cam moving around and we had a crane coming in over the top. Uh, so, you know, around the top and around the front. So we couldn't top light it, so we had to side light it. Now we also had some half CTO on a 4x4 frame and that was basically to get our key light to a neutral territory because our other lights on set were either bright amber like the MML or a very deep blue like the HMIs. So we just wanted those colours to pop so we basically set our key light at a neutral point in between. But I'm missing some information here at the moment. So something's missing off the, uh, off the diagram which we'll get to in just a moment. Now, the problem with how we've got it drawn here, let's say we just had an M40 going through a 12 by 12 frame. The problem we've got here is the dancers who are closest to the frames on either side will be dramatically brighter than the dancers who are in the middle. And we need a consistent exposure or, or very close to an even exposure across our 50 foot dance floor. So basically, um, there's a huge misperception that um, light drops off linear. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna draw a graph. So that's where our light source is. And there's a huge misperception that light drops off like this, pretty much in a straight line, okay? And one of the film schools here in Melbourne actually teaches that. They tell the students that um, double the distance is half the light. That's completely wrong. Um, light drop off is logarithmic. So basically, instead of being a nice linear line like this, it has a curve in it which starts off very steep and then plateaus out. So I'm going to try my best to draw that. So this isn't going to be all that accurate. But it looks something more like this. Okay, so uh, without the bump there. So here's the thing. Close to the light source, so our dance is around here, close to this light source, there is dramatic changes in exposure. But the further away you get from the light source, the less dramatic the changes in exposure. Now I'm gonna use our dancers to explain inverse square law and also give you an idea of the drop off rate. It's not linear like this, where basically you double the distance, you get half the light. Uh, because it's logarithmic, every time you double the distance, uh, you get one quarter the light. Now one quarter the light is two f-stops because f-stops are also logarithmic. So that makes working things out a lot easier. All right, so let's just go through uh, our dancers. So if we have a dancer here, and we have another dancer who's double the distance away from the light, this dancer here will be two f-stops less lit than this guy here. Now, if we take the distance between this guy and the light source and double that, and we have another dancer here, this dancer is another two f-stops less. So this dancer here is a total of four f-stops less than this bloke. Now, if we take that distance again from this dancer to the, um, to the light source and double that, this dancer here is six stops underneath that guy there. Okay, so basically this distance here is two stops, this distance here is two f-stops, and this distance here is two f-stops. Okay, so to quickly sum up again, closer to the light, you've got more rapid change in exposure. The further away you are from the light, the less rapid the change in exposure. So one way to get around this problem is to quite simply take your light and move it further back. Now that sounds great in theory, but what if you've got a studio wall here and you can't get the light further back? Or what if you can get the light further back, but you can't afford the additional firepower? 
So what I mean by that is we're using an M40 here, but if we go double the distance that way, we're gonna need four times more light level, and we probably can't afford that. So how do you get around that? Well, I'm gonna talk about what's missing off our diagram here. Both of our 12x12s have 90 degree grids on them. So I went with a 90 degree grid because I still needed the spread. But how does a grid help get even light level? All right, so I live in a townhouse, so I don't have a front yard or a backyard to set up a 12 by 12 in. So what I've done here is just clip some diffusion to my garage door and clip a uh, grid over the front of it. All right, so let's explain how this works. So uh, let's go in closer. Basically think of every single cell, every one of these, every single cell as a separate light source. Now when I'm in close, I'm only getting lit by the cells that are directly in front of me. The cells that are off to the sides are punching light past me. So on that side and that side, the light's going past me. It's not directly hitting me. Now, if I go a bit further back, I am lit by more cells. So more light hits me from the frame. If I go further and further back, I get lit by more and more cells. All right, so I just want to point out that putting a grid over the front of your diffuser won't give you an even exposure across. You're still going to get drop off but what it does do is it rounds out the top of the curve. Now, let's watch the clip again. And bear in mind that we have a 50 foot dance area and our grids are about 12 foot from the edge of the dance area. Now, we don't get a perfectly even exposure, but we get pretty close. You can have anything you want. Okay, so before we go, I just want to give you one last tip involving inverse square law and f-stops. So imagine we're using a light that can't be dimmed, okay? So the only way I can reduce the light level in a hurry is to pick up and move the light. So if I want it brighter, I move it forwards towards our subject. If I want it darker, I move it further back. So we're talking about small spaces here. So what I do is I visualize the distance in feet. Okay, so basically I do a rough approximation in my head of the distance in feet and then I divide it into f-stops. Okay, so basically we've got our f-stops here. So let's say here is uh, 1.4. Okay, so 1.4 foot. Okay, if I go from 1.4 foot to 2 foot, okay, that's one f-stop. Okay, if I go from 2 foot to 2.8, okay, that's another f-stop. If I go to 4 foot, okay, that's another f-stop. If I go to 5.6 feet, that's another f-stop. If I've got the light at 8 foot, well that's another f-stop. And if I go back here to 11 feet, that's another f-stop. So basically I look along the ground, I visualize it in feet, and then I divide it into the f-stops. And that way I can very, very quickly trim the lights forward and backwards without having to go back and forth to the monitor. I usually get it pretty close the first go. All right, so before we go, a big thank you again to Tim Maloney at Access Films for letting us uh, have access to the footage and letting us show his work. And just to wrap this video up, uh, let's have a look at the official behind the scenes video courtesy of Access Films.